Welcome to The Village, a podcast exploring everyday life and how it relates to our financial freedom and goals. I'm Isaiah Bross, a senior paraplanner here at Village Wealth Management. Today, we are going to talk about fees or how you pay your advisor. Yep, that's probably one of the most important parts of a advisor-client relationship, in my opinion. Yeah? Why is it so hard for people to ask then or even face that about knowing how they're paying their fee or they're paying an advisor or where their money's even going? Uh, so I think there's a combination of everything. But first of all, the industry has made it complex. Yeah. Fees are complex. They're, they're hidden. They're everywhere. They're, you know, and you have to be mindful of that. So uh, complexity is definitely uh, a good, uh, uh, creates obscurity. So I think clients don't understand that. They, uh, they, they try to understand it. They get involved with it. And then all of a sudden they just give up. They're like, ah, oh, whatever. It's expensive. It's probably, you know, it's amazing to me how many times I ask a client, how, how you, you know, how you're paying for this account when they bring it in. No, not really. You know, and they're kind of embarrassed when they say it, you know, and, and it's not really anything to be embarrassed by, but it's just something you should know. You know, yeah. I mean, that's important. The, re- the reason I think that that's so important is, you know, uh, whenever everybody uh, aligns their purpose and, and they start working together, things start happening. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, if you think of it like this, if there's if you're if you're a, a football team and I'm the man, I'm the owner of the football team and I decide I'm going to pay. um uh, I don't know anything about football, so I'm just gonna make stuff up. I'm gonna pay a linebacker to recover fumbles. His bonus is, and his paycheck is based on how many fumbles he recovers. Absolutely. I'm gonna pay the uh, um, the quarterback on touchdown passes. You know, he got to throw a touchdown pass, and that's how you get paid. And then the field goal guy, he gets paid if he hits a field goal, mm-hmm. kicks a field goal. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? That team is not gonna work properly because everybody's got their own vision, their own goal, because they're being compensated to look for a fumble. Guess what right. is going to happen? Right. He's going to look for fumbles. He's not going to see the rest of the play. He's not going to understand the rest of the – of the uh, same with the quarterback. He He's more worried about throwing that touchdown pass. They don't really care about that other stuff. They exactly. know how they're, in, they're getting paid, and their uh, incentives are based on exactly what you described. Yep. So. And so and if that's what you're doing, uh, and that's how you're paying people, then that's exactly the result that you're going to get. And, and whenever you pay an advisor to, I, I, I just had a client uh, come in and they said, well, I'm, uh, or I was a prospect and they come in and they're like, well, you know, how do you get paid? I explained to them how I get paid. I get paid 1.25% on all the assets we manage and it's billed quarterly. That means we take the 1.25, just for everybody to understand this, we take 1.25% of whatever asset it is. So if you have $100,000, it's $1,250 a year and we bill it quarterly. What that means is we divide it by four. That's the first billing cycle, 300 and some dollars. And then the second billing cycle, we take a picture of that again on the, on the second uh, quarter, and we say, oh, the account went to 150. Mm-hmm. Well, we take 150 times 1.25 divided by four. What's that mean? That means I got a pay raise. That, that means my, pay, my fee went up. The fee is always 1.25. However, when it's qu- a quarterly basis, every quarter I either get a pay raise or a pay decrease. Mm-hmm. And so what that does is that changes... The whole motivation changes the whole relationship, changes the whole dynamic whenever you have somebody who's being compensated based on your account value. Right. When the market goes up, he's looking for opportunity or she's looking for opportunity to make more money. When the market drops, they're looking for opportunity to get back out of the market because they're like, wait, wait a second, you know, we're, we're they're reevaluating the long term strategy and making sure it's the proper strategy. They're they're working for you. So back to this prospect, he comes in and he says, well, man, that's awfully expensive. You know, that was uh, he has the dollar amount on, on the one point two five. Yep, that is correct. And, and so we started looking at his. He's well, I'm not paying any fees for these accounts. And so I started looking. He had he had a lot of money in two mutual funds. And and I asked us, well, when when did you buy these? Oh, about twenty five years ago. <laughs> one was a very underperforming fund, and he was very frustrated with the with the performance. I said, did you ever hear the old saying, "You get what you pay for"? You know, I mean, uh, or and, not. And, the Before. reason exactly the reason he was he was not paying a fee for that is because it was not being managed mm-hmm. you know and i give the, the, the a previous advisor credit at least they weren't charging him a management fee and then doing that right that'd even be worse right but i i, I submit to you if he was charging him a management fee it wouldn't be like that because he's going to be motivated with the client to get the account to grow yeah and and you know i mean this isn't you know the one thing you explained too is on your fee, you're, you're very upfront right off the get go. This is 1.25 we make quarterly on your and uh, annually on your total assets, and then it's based on performance. So when their performance goes up, your pay goes up. So that's what gives you the fiduciary responsibility, right? So do you explain that to them? So when when they make money, I mean it's it's more of an incentive. It's a it's a win win for I guess the whole team. 
Yeah, yeah, and, and, and that's what that's where whole the whole idea behind being a fiduciary work. I mean, you're it it you say we all say we're working for our client's best interest. You sure. go down to your your mechanic. And he's like, I'm looking out for you, Isaiah. I want yeah. you to be safe on the road. I'm going to look for your car. But he gets paid to find a problem and fix a ball joint that probably didn't need to be fixed or right. or a, a muffler that's, you know, leaking that, you know, whatever the case is. Yeah. It's a bad analogy. But, but that's the same concept because, yeah, you're saying one thing, but you're being compensated to find a problem or to move money in, in one direction to create a commission or, or whatever. You, that, <laughs> excuse me. That, that means... You're not working. Your your compensation is not really uh, complementing the best interest of the client. Yeah, it just that you know that's just the way it is. You know. So help me, I guess, understand why why it's so complicated, or why I guess they make it so complicated on you know other advisor, other firms uh, to nickel dime things, and it's it's so hard to understand why it, it's laid out a certain way. And and at the end of the year, we we see this. You know, I paid whatever in fees and you don't know what half these fees are. So why do I want to even sign up for that? I, I'm trying to, I guess, what's the difference between something like that and what we're doing? Well, I, I really, you know, there, I think there's a lot of reasons. Uh, one of which I think is probably the bigger reason in my view is, you know, if advisors and firms lose sight of the overall picture. You know, you know what, here I go on a tangent. Our problem with society right now is we want everything now. You know, I'm talking, I'm or really dirt cheap too. Like, yeah. Right, so. We want something for nothing and we want it tomorrow. Yeah. You know, uh, that's why when we, we uh, order a, a package on Amazon, we expect it to be delivered in two days, you know, and that's the society we live in. Yeah. And, and, you know, working, we're trying to hire advisors. And we, when we talk to these young guys coming in and the advisors coming in, they can't wrap their mind around a five year process of building a sustainable foundation that they can build a practice from they can't wrap their minds around that and and for them that's like well man i was told i wasn't i was gonna make money you know right from day one you know and 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 so i think back to your question about fees and things is you know firms and advisors get they lose sight of the long-term vision because they're looking at next quarter's pay mm -hmm. and and they look and say hey wait a minute we if we make these adjustments in these portfolios and we do these things we better charge the client these transaction fees. Yes, we're charging a management fee, but then we have these transaction fees. Then we have confirmation fees, and and they're going to allocate the client to that because they're looking and saying, "Hey, that's taken away from my overall fee next quarter." Mm -hmm. It's like, well, yeah, that is true. However, <laughs> what happens in five and ten and fifteen years? Right. What happens to what happens whenever a client is it, it appreciates the rate of return they see and they talk to their friends. You know, and, and that's ultimately our business. We, 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 have, we had a, a phenomenal year last year. Thanks God. You know, it was a great year. And, and 99% of it was organic friends telling friends, you know, and we didn't do any massive advertising campaigns. No, all we did was do our market updates and, you know, people talked about that and shared that with their friends. And next thing you know, our phone's ringing and, and it's still ringing and we're having it. We, ha we are off to a year. This year we'll blow last year out of the water. I think that's what we're going for, which is trying the communication and, and understanding what all the different processes are that we offer. Yep. And being right up front, even come down to our fees. Yep. So for us to sit down in front of the camera and, and try to explain a fee, I mean that's uh, something I don't know too many people or firms that would do, and, and right in front of the clients, I guess. Yeah. Well, and and again, if you're if you're straight and you're honest, and uh, that 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 spurs more growth. Yeah. I'm I'm looking at this in five and 10 and 15 years, 20 years. Yeah. I'm, I love what I do. I'll probably be doing it until I'm senile and they force me to leave well, yeah. quite frankly. But, uh, I, I'm, I'm not looking at the next quarter. The next quarter is important. We have to stay in business. Don't get me wrong, but I would rather charge a client a flat 1.25. That's all inclusive, not nickel and dime, not hide fees, not do things and have a, a raving fan, uh, from that client that tells five other people. And I get five other referrals because what I'm saving on a $24 transaction fee by billing the client that uh, and allocating that, I've way more, I've made that a thousand times over when they send me their friend who has just as much assets as they do, and we're we're uh, managing that extra pot of money for that friend. I'm getting 1.25 on that extra pot. Mm. Advi it's it's so back to your question. Why are we a nickels and dime? Why is it so uh, convoluted the fees in the process of how we get paid? Because we're all trying. Uh, I shouldn't say we're all. Let me rephrase that. 
a lot of advisors get caught up in, hey, I want to have the flash and bang now. I need to make my Mercedes payment tomorrow. You know, I need to look at, you know, I'm wanting to upgrade to the new yacht next month or whatever. Yeah. And they can't wrap their mind around delayed gratification, yeah. building the business the proper way, building it off the foundation of trust, integrity, and saying, hey, this is what we charge. And, and I'll tell you, this is what we charge. Are we the cheapest thing? Absolutely not. Charles Schwab is cheaper than we are. Charles Schwab, if you want a cheaper advisor, Charles Schwab is the advisor. Mm. He's cheaper. And I'm not even going to try to compete against Charles Schwab because uh, that's not my business model. It just isn't. And, and I can I can sit here and I can I could talk a lot about why we're different than Charles Schwab and and the reason I choose not to compete in that in that arena because I'm not going to use passive asset management that's just me I, I think active management's going to win long term you know and I know that's a debate that we can have until we all retire but and yeah. it's been going on for the last 20 years you know yeah, and, I mean, and there's podcast, yeah. and there's times in uh, the, the active uh, management wins and loses and, and it all have this cycle I think overall though, Whenever you have somebody who's looking after that, it's going to win, you know. Mm. So, but but I but to answer your question, I think it's because we cannot see I, and that that frustrates me in this business. It frustrates me when I'm trying to hire an advisor. It also frustrates me with clients. Clients look and say, you know, ah, oh, well, yeah, I was hoping I'd get you know a, a much higher rate of return because I'm running behind. It's like, well, you should have thought of that ten years ago when you didn't put that money away and you took the extra vacation or bought the extra toy and paid the payment to the bank yeah. for that razor yeah. for $350 a month when you could have put that in your Roth and had $60,000 in your Roth and you wouldn't be trying to catch up and, and swinging for the fences and taking risks on GameStop. You yeah. know? So, but it goes back to that delay. We can't think of that. And, and we're no different in this business. Advisors are the same. We have this, we're Pinterest, we're flesh and human, just like everybody else. Absolutely. So we have emotion, we have impatience, we have all that. That's why I think it, it that's, that's why I think the fees are, are so, you know, convoluted hmm. because the advisor is trying to, to capitalize and get as much as he can today. Yeah. I take a different approach. I look at it and I say, in 10 years, I will have more business than I can handle. Yeah. And, and I'm comfortable with that because I'm, I have a plan to hire more advisors and have, have a whole different infrastructure in 10 years. This business will look completely different in 10 years. Yeah. I'll still be here. I'll still be managing assets. I'll still be working with my clients, but it's going to be on a complete different scale. Yeah. And that excites me. And I have the patience to say, I'm going to do that the right way now. I'm not going to, I'm not going to short circuit this now. Yeah. Yes. I can make more money yeah. right now, tomorrow, but I'll make 10 times more money if I just take my time and, play the cards right. And one thing I've noticed with just the, you know, the long-term clients that have come in, the happiness on them and, and the respect, I guess, you guys have between each other is, uh, you know, that relationship you guys, what you've always said is, you know, you want to cook with a crock pot and not a microwave. So, I mean, with doing that, I mean, that's where your, your long-term, your fees are going to see and your performance is going to see over the long-term. So, I mean, you know, passing on selling a uni uh, annuity right now and making a quick commission or whatever. I mean, that's what I think a lot of people push for. And sometimes it makes sense to sell annuities, but I know uh, sitting next to you hand in hand is, uh, you know, you, you try to talk everything out of an annuity unless it absolutely makes sense in that situation. So, I mean, obviously that's a quick dime on that and that's it's only one reference, but yeah. Yeah. And that's another whole podcast. Annuities, yep. But uh, they get a bad rap because they, they got overused. And the reason sure. they got overused is they because they paid a fat commission and yeah. that quick. Yeah, that's exactly right. So there are places for them and I'll use them, but yep. you're right. I mean, yeah, you know, so I, I really think, it, you know, the sum it up, you know, understanding how your advisor gets paid is critical. It's probably, I, I would submit to you, it's probably more critical than his asset management style. Mm. Understanding that because you can might have a guy who has a great, uh, uh, style in managing a portfolio, but if he's working and compensated against you, it's not going to help you. Yeah. Long run. It's just not. So what's something, how do you, how do you monitor that as somebody viewing this or watching this? I mean, how do you see something like that? Well, the first thing I would ask is, you know, I, I, if you're watching this and you say, and, and you should, hopefully you're not a client of ours <laughs> that doesn't understand. If you are, please call us at the office and we'll uh, sit down and yeah. we'll sit down yeah. and explain. But if you, if you can't honestly say, I know how I'm getting, uh, how, how I'm paying my advisor, then you need to do some research. You yep. need to do some soul searching. You need to figure that out. So our statements for all the clients out there, you look at your December 31st statement and you'll see taxes, fees, and expenses. And the, I think it's the sixth page on the statement under fees. That's my paycheck. That's exactly what you, you were, you were billed. It's right there on that statement mm. and that's it. So the 12B1 fees are credited back. You know, 
we don't take those. So uh, that's your fee, you know. And the, and um, you know if, if you're uh, you know uh, not working with with us and you don't know how you're being you're compensating your advisor, find that out, yeah. you know. And and I think that's something that's you should do quickly. You know? It's your money. You should know where your Absolutely. money's going every dime. Yep. Yeah. And here's the thing: so. nobody works for you. Are going to get something for nothing. Yep. You know, I, I, I'm all the time teaching my kids, you know, they, I remember when they were in elementary, dad, you know, we had free pizza today. I'm like, wait a sec, that was good, but somebody paid for that pizza. Yeah. I mean, that dough just didn't magically appear with sauce on it and cheese. And, and, you know, I mean, somebody had to pay for that. Yeah. I know it was free to you, yeah. but you have to understand the concept that, you know, nothing in this world is free. I think we all know that. I um, remember my mom telling me that growing up, nothing is free. Yeah. And, and then... So we're getting free stimulus money right now. We won't go into that because that's a whole another topic as well too. Yeah, exactly. But uh, bottom line is nothing's free. So yep, yep. We'll see that. We'll be we'll be paying for that through taxes and probably inflation and what, you know lots of other, you know. But we'll There's some we'll mastermind ma- plan for yep, sure. We'll yeah. navigate that as well. Yep. Right. It, this is not the first time we've we've saw, well, it's the first time we saw it at this level. But yeah. you know we'll navigate that. So I'm I'm confident and I'm not uh, staying up at night thinking about that. Um, we're planning for it. Yeah. We're looking for it, but. You know, that's something, another whole different podcast there. But, but again, understanding how, and, and you know, everybody knows advisors are making money. Yeah. Everybody knows that. Just how much money? Is it fair? Yeah. Uh, how are they being compensated? Are they being compensated for you or against you? You know, those are the questions you need to make sure is alignment. And I'll tell you, uh, Harvard uh, did a study. It's been, oh, probably in the 80s or something. They looked for the most efficient way to increase productivity in the workplace. And they did all these different things. They brought in stuff. They monitored things. They spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on this study. They found out the most efficient way to increase productivity is increased supervision. Mm. When the boss is there, productivity goes up. Yeah. You know, and just move the boss's desk out out in front of everybody, productivity just went up. It was that simple. Pro, uh, when supervision increases, productivity increases. Mm. It's no different than in your portfolio. It's not that we're smarter than the next guy. But whenever you compensate us to to supervise, and and to watch, the portfolio it's it's going to improve just by sheer fact that we're watching, yeah. <laughs> we're looking, yeah. we're talking. And the other thing that's interesting is how many how many people have relationships with advisors they've never met. They left something there, and it's laying at some four hundred one k or some random company that they knew the guy who they first went to, and then he went on, and it's three hands later, and, and it's like well. You know, if that person does not have the accountability, when I look at Mr. and Mrs. Smith, when they come in and, and the, I say, you know what, uh, you know, I, this was my idea and it's not working well, yeah. I better have a good explanation. Yeah. And I'll tell you what happens is I know that appointment's coming. I'm going to have the explanation for that mm-hmm. or we're going to make changes to that mm-hmm. because they're the boss. They're my supervisor, you know, and why them coming in and sitting there looking me in the eye and say, Mark, or listen to me on the phone or looking at it on a Zoom call. And saying that's not working, that will increase productivity. Just that alone, yeah. you know. When you call and you get, um, you know, one guy, and then you call back and get another guy, and you call back again and get, I mean, and that's your advisor relationship. Don't be surprised when the performance doesn't show up for that. Don't be surprised if the service isn't there. Yeah. I mean, that's just, you know, you get what you pay for. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, <laughs> I had a four hundred one k five five plus years ago, and I hate to even say this is uh, I didn't even know the login to my my uh, account with, uh, with his company. And, uh, you know, I'm like, well, fine. It's, 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 it's probably doing good. I don't know. And, uh, you know, obviously if I say this nowadays, I mean, that's it to say this out loud is just like kind of crazy in my, in my head, but I, I think it's kind of more of a norm thing that's, uh, you know, you change jobs, you kind of just forget about a 401k it floats out there. And that's kind of what happened to me. And I just kind of forgot my login and I, I have no idea how to, who to get a hold of or any of that stuff. And I was paying fees on it. And I'm like, when I started rolling everything over here, I'm like, Oh my goodness. You know? So, I mean, so, I it's think common. It, it's very common, yep. but you know, and, and if you're in, like you said, like if, if you're uneasy or not understanding what your fees are, I mean, we'll, we'll take a look at them too. We'll help them help describe it and figure yep. it out too. So, I mean, or, you know, call your advisor as well too, but absolutely, yeah, absolutely figure out and understand them. Absolutely. No. So, and there's nothing, there's nothing to be embarrassed about when you don't know yeah. it's whenever you choose to be ignorant. That's when you have to be embarrassed. Yeah. When you know you should and you don't do anything. Yeah. That's the embarrassing part. Yeah. You know, but just because you don't know and you've never taken the time to do it, now that you're aware of it, it's okay. Go, go, go have that conversation or bring it in. We'll give you a, a review on that. Yeah. You know, and say, one of the, one of the first things I do when I see a prospect show up, I'm looking to say, I am one of the first questions I ask, how are you paying for this? Yeah, what's your fees? 
You don't, have, you don't have any idea. And that will tell me volumes that the answer to that question tells me volumes. Mm. So, and you know, anyways, we're a yeah. little bit over this time. I know we're at 20 minutes. I want to keep these at 15, but so, but anyway, it is so critical. Understand the way you're paying for things. We all know it's nothing, nothing in this world is free. Make sure it's fair. Make sure it's alignment with your goals. Make sure it's in alignment with, with, you know, your overall, um, direction in life that you want so yep that's excellent. the message so excellent well thank you that's that's very informative yep. all right until next time all righty security and advisory services offered through commonwealth financial network a member of finner and civic a registered investment advisory fixed insurance product and services are offered through cds insurance agency actual performance and results may vary these interviews do not constitute a recommendation as to the suitability of any investment for person or persons having circumstances similar to those portrayed. Consult a financial advisor regarding your specific circumstances. Past performance is not guaranteed of future results. The historical returns, expected returns, or probability projections may not reflect actual future performance. The material contained herein has been prepared from sources and data we believe to be reliable but not to be construed as providing investment services in any jurisdiction as such offers or solicitation would be illegal.